My next guest is Terrence Woodbury, the founding partner and chief executive officer of Hit Strategies. His firm conducted this polling and they've been tracking black voters' attitudes. He's here to talk about the data and help explain where this disconnect actually stems from. Terrence, welcome so much to Amplified. I know you are tracking these black voters and the results of your latest research are in. Give us the dish. What are black people thinking about, bruh? Aisha, thank you so much for having me on Amplified. I'm excited to be here on the platform and here with your audience. You know, there's a, Democrats have a lot of work to do here. Black voters are very aware, acutely aware, of the role that they play delivering the Senate to Democrats, the House to Democrats, and the White House to Democrats. And that, that awareness comes with a level of expectation. They expect progress on their mm -hmm. top issue priorities. And right now, they are saying far too little, far too slow. And frankly, Democrats have an opportunity with Build Back Better, but they're going to have to do a better job messaging it and not the fact that they passed legislation. Passing legislation is not a win for black voters, but what is in that legislation that will make black lives and black communities better? And that's the work that Democrats are gonna to have to do when they finally get this thing passed. So why are they having such a hard time communicating their policies to us? What's the disconnect? You know, when I talk to Black voters in focus groups every day, Aisha, we went on, a, on an entire uh, focus group tour post-2020, specifically talking to Black voters that voted in 2020 for the first time. I wanted to understand what was different this time that made you show up, and how do we replicate that? And, and you know, there was a, there's a sense of power, of collective power, uh, uh, that Black voters felt when they cast their ballots. In fact, 73% of black voters said they felt very powerful uh, when they voted in 2020. Mm. And today that number has dropped to 43%. We know that there are direct correlations between self-perceived power and political participation. And a part of why that power, that those perceived perceptions of power have dropped so much, they told me in focus groups, it's because the day after election day, they stopped hearing from politicians that their votes felt like it was just a transaction. They, they were just blow, texting me every day, every hour they were texting me. And as soon as I voted, they stopped texting. And so that's, that, that's, that's where the mm. disconnect is. Democrats are gonna have to start communicating back into the palms of their hands the way they did up until election day. And it's fascinating to me because, you know, as I look through all the things in the Build Back Better Act, and we have been breaking this down on this show quite a bit, there are some very concrete provisions in the president's signature plan that actually would impact black communities. And it seems to me this administration is being very intentional about line iteming those things as a way to say, thank you so much for your support. I'm listening. I'm going to do something for you. For example, the proposal allots $45 billion to replace lead pipes that have disproportionately poisoned drinking water in black communities. Now, we all watch Flint. We all see what's going down in Jackson, Mississippi with regards to waterworks. We know how this is affecting black people. It's a really big thing. $45 billion is nothing to sneeze at to say, look, we are line iteming something for you. And, and on and on. There's subsidies for affordable housing construction, billions in rental assistant funding. These are things that would drive down rent for black Americans specifically. So I'm just confused because it's not honestly for a lack of actually having something to show that they're trying to do. It seems that they just don't want to talk to us. And do you have any sense of why they don't want to talk to us? Well, a part of it, Aisha, I have to imagine is that they don't actually know what's going to get passed in this bill yet. And they don't want to start promising things that may not mm -hmm. make it over the finish line. A lot of the most important provisions in here really do address the top priorities that we see in, in, in the black community. When we even ask them, what is most important for the, for, the build, for the Build Back Better legislation to address, the top three issues were climate, the impacts of climate change, um, replacing lead water pipes, and investing in HBCUs and higher education. And at least two of those three things might not make it across the finish line, but this is exactly where Democrats have a communication problem. 
they have to communicate mm. value signal where their priorities are, what they are fighting for, even if those things don't actually pass, because that is our calling card for the midterm. It's not that Democrats are debating amongst Democrats. It's that Republicans refuse to even come to the debate, that their only contribution to the debate is <laughs> no and obstruction. Yes, yes. And I got to tell you, I am a black voter and I 100 percent agree with everything you're saying, because in this instance, dude, I would give you an A for effort and I'd still roll with your team because I know that you're fighting on my behalf. And then we really have a boogeyman to keep beating up on right now. We're just beating up on our own. And I use that in such air quotes as I reference Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. But whatever. But to your point. It seems like the Democrats do a really good job of rallying black voters around anti-Trumpism. So, you know, we know that that boogeyman got people animated in record numbers of turnout for the 2020 election. I mean, Trump got more votes than he got in 2016, but Democrats really turned out a lot of people and a whole lot of new voters and, and a lot of new black voters. I, I wonder why is it that we don't do so good at having an affirmative message. Is it that black voters aren't, aren't maybe as animated by the affirming, like we doing it for you, we working for you, maybe we don't have a result yet, but we're trying, and it's just we need a boogeyman, we need to say Republicans are awful, they're, they're blocking and they're tackling and we can't get anything moved. Like, you know, what's happening? I'm just curious if you're finding, specifically, Terrence, that black voters aren't responding to certain kind of messages and that's what's got us tripped up. That's a good question, Aisha. And we are doing a lot of exploration around that exact issue. What is the messaging that is effective post-Trump? What is the, the message that's effective mm -hmm. post-election cycle? And what we're finding is, and this is where Democrats are really gonna have to have to pivot here, that electing Democrats, flipping the Senate, uh, flipping the control of the chamber, those things are not perceptions of power to Black people. Even passing legislation is not a perception of power mm. to Black people. So when Raphael Warnock goes back to Georgia, his message better not be, I pass Build Back Better. The message better be, I pass child tax credits for your family, and here's how you can access them. Oh. I pass universal uh, child, uh, kindergarten, and, and, and pre-K, and, pre and here's how you can access it. The one thing that I keep encouraging Democrats is to, is to continue using the click here messaging that we use during the election, which mm. is there's an election coming up to access your ballot, click here, to see if you are still registered, click here, to, to, to determine the nearest mm. polling place, click here. We have to apply the same click here messaging to access resources in the black community. To, 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 to determine if you are qualified for child tax credits, click here. And that's what black voters wanna know. Is this just about my vote or is it about connecting me to the resources that will actually make my family and my community better? And so Democrats are gonna have to get a lot, have to get back to that, that click here messaging mm. that connects voters to, to resources. Oh, I love that. I love that. I want to shift gears and I want to, while I have you, I want to talk about the fact that elections are coming up next week. Next Tuesday, voters are going to the polls in several states, including Virginia, which is a highly anticipated gubernatorial uh, uh, race there with Terry McAuliffe and, and a Republican who's running around pretending he's not like Trump. But a lot of his views are super antiquated. I, it was funny to me to find today and like funny, like ugh, not like ha ha funny. Um, <laughs> that literally in Virginia, the Republican candidate is like anti-marriage equality and trying to uh, suggest that we should get rid of Toni Morrison books in schools. Like this is how backward that is. Um, and so I wanna know what you're seeing in your polling, uh, especially in Virginia, but around the country and in, in some of the ballot measures that are happening. Do you think that black voters are gonna turn out for this election? I mean, that, that is what I will be paying attention to more than anything next Tuesday, Aisha, is how do young voters, how do black voters, how do the, the, the bedrock of the Democratic mm -hmm. coalition, those voters that, that, we, that we animated for the first time in 2020 that led to historic turnout um, and, and propelled Democrats to victory, what do they do next Tuesday as they are beginning to become less patient with the progress that has been made 
can Terry McCullough deliver a message uh, that 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 connects that that connects those dots and lends to that click here, um, uh, connecting them to resources? But frankly, what we see in Virginia is what we're seeing in a lot of battleground states around the country, and that is Republicans trying to activate their base for dog whistle politics using things like critical race theory and mm -hmm. defund the police. Uh, a, a manufactured immigration crisis and even women's reproductive health, these social hot button issues to animate their base. And my, my only advice to Democrats is as long as they're blowing that dog whistle, we don't get to cover our ears. We're gonna have to respond with the bullhorn that points to a brighter future where our diversity is in fact our strength. Well, I hope that all these Democrats are listening to your advice. Terrence Woodbury, thank you so much for coming to share all the things as our number one pollster here on Amplified. We appreciate you and look forward to hearing more from you as the political season uh, heats up. And of course, we'll all be watching next Tuesday. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, Aisha. Thank you.